Wake up, you sleeping giant. Wake up again. You are giving testimony of your past. We did this one. I used to lay hands on the sick. I used to cast out devils. I used to, you know, heal the sick. You know, demon possessed people. I lay hands on them to recover. What about now? And you are not giving testimony of a new thing that God did into your life. You are sleeping. You are sleeping. You are sleeping. What is the new thing that God is doing to your life? If there is no new account, no new testimony, you are sleeping. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's another time to be here with you in this program. The moment of change with your pastor, Innocent Jackson Eyola is my name. Amen. As we begin this program, God is going to change some certain things in your life and face it again. I know it's going to do something. My topic tonight is wake up the sleeping giant. Wake up the sleeping giant. Amen. Sleeping giant means the backsliding Christians, the weak Christians. The Christians that have back up of the faith. Maybe because they have walked so long and they feel they are not tired. You are, you know, the sleeping giant that need to wake up. Wake up the sleeping giant. A Christian that is strong is a giant. Is a champion. He's a champion. Christian that is serious. He's a giant in the Lord. God respects you too much to walk and never be tired. The Bible says, Book of Luke 18, verse 1. He said, Men ought always to pray and not to faint. Let's pray. Father, I demand, O God, for your strength and your ability. As I speak your words, let it bring healing, deliverance, salvation, and holiness to change people's lives. Amen. In Jesus' name. Let's move on. Let's take our test tonight from Romans 13, from verse 11 to verse uh, you know, 14. I read. He said, And that knowing the time, it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed. We should wake up from our sleep, sleeping giants. Because now is our salvation nearer than when we ever first believed in God. Remember, we are closer to the appearing of Christ even more than when you first repent from your sin. We are now closer. Amen. Your repentant days are over. They are far compared to where we are going, which is nearer. He said our salvation is nearer than when we ever first believed. So it is time to wake up. Are you weak? Wake up. Are you slumbering? Wake up. Are you tired? Wake up. Are you frustrated? Wake up. Somebody cheated on you? Wake up. You don't know what you are doing? Wake up from your slumber. You've been a vibrant Christian before. But now it seems as if things are happening to you you cannot explain. I am here to charge you up and to encourage you. Wake up from your slumber. Wake up, the sleeping giants. I'm here to wake you up tonight that something that God has been using to do before, you can do even more than that. As you realize yourself that you need to wake up from your slumber. Verse 12, as we are reading from Romans chapter 13 tonight, verse 11 to verse 14. So we should wake up from our slumber. Verse 12. The night is fast spent. We have labored with God enough. It is not time to back up. Giants, no time to back up. Anybody that is strong and vibrant is called giants. Remember Goliath was called a giant. He was called a champion. Several names was named on him. Until the great David, small boy, that came to overthrow him. So don't let anything overthrow you because you are a giant in the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord God is in you. It makes you greater than even giants. It makes you greater than champion. That is why the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 37 is there, For we are more than conqueror 
through Christ that love us. You are more than somebody that conquer because Christ gave you the victory, having conquered the enemy. The Bible spoke of Revelation 12, verse 11, that in Jeremiah, together with the host of heaven, overcame that dragon, Satan, the devil. And you overthrew him with the blood of Jesus Christ Nazareth and by the word of their testimony. Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 said there was war in heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, my topic city man, wake up, the sleeping giants. There is war. If war can be in heaven, there is war going on here on earth and you can't see. Physical may physical war may be going on. Coronavirus may spread, things are happening, people are dying. And politicians are taking money, running abroad here and there. And different things are happening. People are killing each other, murdering each other. Kidnappers are getting rampant. Wake up and face the issue. We need to charge. We need to challenge the situation by prayer. We need to challenge the situation by fasting. We need to challenge the situation by storing the word of life to know what to do to hear from God, to study God's mind, so that we can you know disseminate God's message to the people. My topic says wake up the sleeping giants. You are a giant in Christ. The Bible spoke second Timothy chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. The Bible says, as a good soldier of Christ, do not be carried away with the affairs of this world because you are a soldier of Christ. You don't mind what's happening in this earth again. You know, around you, you only mind to focus on that war and the battle that we are involved in. Ladies and gentlemen, my topic is man. Oh, wake up, the sleeping giants. Let's go to verse 12. I'll be ready. He said, The night is fast spent, you know, and the day is at hand. Ori kasaka bakwaha. The nice at hand. So let us therefore cast off the walls of darkness and let us put on the armor of God. Let us cast off the walk of darkness and put on the whole armor of God. Ephesians 6 verse 10 to 12. He said, put on the armor of God. Resist the devil. He shall flee. He said, finally, brethren, put on the armor of God that they may be able to stand against the words of Satan the devil. Because it's so tricky. Put it on the armor of God, the word of life, the fasting, the seriousness, the holiness of righteousness, the sincerity, amen, the honesty as a Christian. Put it on and don't let anything make you weak. Amen. So we are moving on. Verse 13. He said, let us walk honestly, honestly as in the day. Let us walk honestly. You have to be honest in your walking with God as a child of God. We need to be honest. These days, are Christians really trusted now? They are not behaving like the world. The world is trying to change to be Christians. You know, other religions are trying to change. Muslims are trying to change to become Christians. Hindu worshippers are trying to change to become Christians. Idol worshippers are packing up their attire. The Christian that is the right way to God, they are even getting tired. That is why I bring the message tonight to you and I say, wake up the sleeping giant. You are a giant in Christ and God respects you a lot. Don't disappoint God. Wake up from every dimension of life. Are you still rubbing yourself in sin? You are joking with sin, playing with sin. Don't be like something. Don't be like something that started sleeping upon his giant. Samson was a judge that judged Israel for 20 good years. He judged Israel for 20 years. He judged the person as a king. He didn't know his right. He was playing here and there looking for prostitutes to, to, to have connection with. And the Bible says of he judges chapter 16. The Bible says from verse 1, it said, And Samson went to Gaza. And he removed all their gates and all their pillars and all their bars and their poles of the gates of the city. He took the, to the gates and put it upon his shoulder and went away. And he later they came back again. He was in love with a girl in Timna, that same system of a uh, judge's system. He took from verse 16, from verse 16 to verse 21. You see that, you know, something, you know, fell in love with a prostitute Delilah and the parents said what I do with prostitute and the Bible also said that it was God that wanted to use that thing to deal with the Philistines and with the enemy the Bible said that Samson came to Gaza and removed all the gates and the Gazians were annoyed and angry why must he do this so that one led to where they planted that Delilah to now make Delilah to make Samson to sleep 
It is what you like. That is when the, the enemy try to come out from. He know they knows the king, the elders, they knew that Samson was in, in love with their doctor of the land, the, 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 the prostitute. And he said, okay, this Delilah, we're going to use it against something. What you love, that's what the enemy is against you. I don't know what you love. Do you love sleep? Do you love women? You love smoking? You like drinking? You like different things in life? And those are the things the enemy, the devil wants to capitalize on to deal with you. He wants to deal with you. And so Samson was, you know, was carried away with a woman. The Bible says that Delilah made Samson to drink wine that God warned him about. And he made him to sleep upon his laps. Oh my God. Samson fell so down. He fell flat. He's not sleeping on the laps of a prostitute. Samson was a king during his time. The Bible called him judges. This time we call them chief or a nogi of the land. And he was guiding Israel for 20 good years. And the Bible said that Samson, Delilah, make it to fell to sleep. He still kept sleeping on top on the laps of Delilah. Delala is there to finish you. You have to wake up. I don't know the Delala in your laps right now. I don't know the woman in your laps right now. I don't know the man in your laps right now. A man can be representing Delala that against you. Women can present Delala against you. Things you love, food can be Delala against you. You know, and they can attack you. It can affect you. I'm telling you that Delala is bad for you. Those things you love, they are Delala that can lead you to hell. And the Bible said that after Delilah has made something to sleep upon her lap, oh my God, a fallen hero, a fallen giant, he called the Philistines. He said, he said, come right now, come, let us bind him. Because something, the Bible said before that verse that something has already revealed his secret to Delilah. And Delilah is aware that something has revealed everything to her. He called them, he called the Philistines, he said, come, and they tie up something. Samson said, I will wake up the same time. I will rise up the sun and shake my body as I used to do. That time, Samson was righteous. He can shake his body. He could shake his body and turn left and right. Samson was not a big giant man. You are seeing him. He was as normal being, just somebody like me, slim and normal being. He was not fat as if he is a giant. But the spirit in him was greater than the giant. And so he could carry the gates, he could do anything for the land. He can kill, he kill lion with his hands, he kill bear with his hands, he did different things. Amen. So what am I saying tonight? That after the Lala called on the Philistines, they tied up something. The first thing they did to something was to pluck up his eyes. The book of Judges 16, verse 16 to 21. They pluck up his eyes so they cannot use that eye to see. The enemy want to blindfold you. He want to make you sleep. So they cannot concentrate to serve God. He wants to blindfold you. The Bible says, the book of Isaiah 56 verse 10, he said, the prophets are not blindfolded. The watchmen, the prophets who are the watchmen of God, they are not blindfolded. And they love cheating. They love evil. They love drunkenness. Prophet of God. He said, they love cheating. They love, they are, the Bible says that they are not greedy. Looking for to make gain. No matter how the gain come about, prophets are not greedy. In our time, they are greedy. Those days, in Isaiah 56 verse 10, they were also greedy. They were looking for things, filthy lucre, that was upon their lives. But thank God today, you can wake up from your slumber. My top is the man, wake up the sleeping giants. You are a giant in Christ. Why must you play with your life? You are greater than that. Something was the only thing you could fall in love was the prostitute on the street. When a king can command, go and bring that lady for me. Without even paying price, price. Something became useless, jump from one place to the other. God warned him, don't cut off your hair. Don't drink. Don't do this. And he disobeyed God. The first thing that made him sleep was disobedience. I don't know what God has been warning you about. You are disobedient to God. And you are falling flat, but he wait for you to come back today. You can come back again and bounce back. I say you can come back again and bounce back. Because the Bible skip Proverbs 16, uh, 14, verse 12 says there's a way that seems right to the man, but the hand is a, is a way of destruction. I don't know what seems right to you tonight, but there's a way to come back again. Proverbs 16, 25, a way seems right to the man, but the way of destruction is coming. Wake up, you sleeping giant. Wake up again. You are giving testimony of your past. We did this one. 
I used to lay hands on the sick. I used to cast out devils. I used to, you know, heal the sick. You know, demon possessed people. I lay hands on them to recover. What about now? And you are not giving testimony of a new thing that God did into your life. You are sleeping. You are sleeping. You are sleeping. What is the new thing that God is doing to your life? If there is no new account, no new testimony, you are sleeping. The Bible says, the book of Isaiah 8, verse 16, towards 18, he said, you know, he said, seal my testimony. Let share my law among my disciples. He said, I will wait upon the Lord that hath hidden his face from mankind. Verse 18. He said, I and my children and my wife, the Lord has given to me. We are made for signs and for wonders. Not only for one day, for every day, signs and wonders every day. They are in the opera with God. If you hear me say amen. Listen to my topic, say amen. We call the sleeping giants. You are a giant in Christ. Don't play with your life. Amen. So we are in we are our test, our grand test is taken from Romans 13, from verse 11 to verse 14, and we are now in uh, uh, verse 13. It says, Let us walk honestly and uh, as in the daytime, not in rioting and drunkenness, and not in troubling and whiteness, <laughs> and not in strife and envy. The Bible, I like this place. So emphasize several things we need to share with us. Amen. He said, not in what on us. What on means no lack of control. Somebody is working in what on us, they are lack of control. Our people these days are Christians, ministers, pastors, bishops, parents, children, lacking control. No, no subjective to one another anymore. Especially our children these days, they are working in what on us, disobedient, disobedient to parents. You talk to them, they back at you, but in our days, parents are held in high esteem, and that is the spirit of God. Amen. To respect elder. He said the people that are sleeping are people that work in wantonness. They are lack of of self-control. They are lack of God's control. They are lack of church control. They are lack of God's control. They are lack of parents' control. Why? Because they are walking in wantonness. That is, they are sleeping. Wake up. It's time for you to wake up. Wake up now. The time has come. Wake up from your slumber, my friends. It is time to wash and pray. Arise, son, for the light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen. Now wake up from your slumber, my friends. It is time to walk and pray. Arise and for the light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen. Our Redeemer is coming again. So let us watch and pray. Our rewarder is coming again. It is time to watch and pray. Wake up. Our test is Romans 13, verse 11 to verse 14. We are now in verse 14. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make no provision for the flesh, oh my God, to fulfill the lust thereof. Make no provision for the flesh, and put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Say, put on your head. Muemo sanyahu. Put your Christ, put Bible for your head. Put church on your head. Many people put church in their, in their shoulder. Some put it in their armpit. When things are good happening, things I want to happen to them also. They don't like it to, for Bible to, for God to appear, for God to assist them. They put it on their, they put the high God in their shoulder, in their armpit. I put church for head. I was preaching a young man that I led to Christ. He said, no, no, they put church for head. No, they do this thing. I should have been put, I said, no. I began to minister to this young man. I said, you have to put God on your head. Many, many years ago. And I was surprised when I went to preach for him in the church in Lagos. He has a big church, great church now. And I went there and I preached for him. He introduced me, said, this is a, my father that led me to Christ. I was surprised. Because many people will not give me the honor. Will not give somebody the honor. He will hide that honor. He said, he led me to Christ. He gave testimony of how I led him to Christ. Amen. So, I'm not after that. I'm not after how God wants to wake you tonight. He wants to wake you tonight. He wants to wake you. Will you permit him? Don't slip off your Christian faith. 
Don't slip off your Christian faith. Jesus is coming so soon quickly. It is time to get up from your feet. Wake up. More than what you used to do. Wake up. How long do you pray now? How often do you pray now? Do you still remember prayer time? See your own? Oh my God. The Bible spoke of Matthew 26 from verse 36 to verse 44. This was in Garden of Gethsemane. Oh, I thank God for that place. Victory happened in that place. Christ, after, if you read from verse 1 to verse, you know, to verse 16, you will see that Christ partook of the Passover. And now Judah is cut off, you know, left that place to go and betray him to the elders and chief priests for silver of money, about 30 pieces of silver or so. The Bible says that why Christ was there to pray the normal prayer time, because despite he want to be crucified, despite he want to be crucified and went to hell and, and, and be buried and raised again, he still had to go and pray. The Bible said, I recorded that Jesus Christ was, you know, a little bit weak and tired and he was, he was so passive. Amen. And the Bible said that he, he took 11 of the disciples to that place in Gethsemane Mountain. And he began to pray. As he got to a section of the place, he, he told the eight of them, he said, stay here. Why are I going? Because one has already run away to go and betray me. And he asked Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, Peter, James, and John, he said, stay here. And why I go further to that place? The Bible said that it was a stone cast, just a one pole or like that. He went to pray on his own. So there are prayer times you pray together with families. There are prayer times you pray together on your own. There are prayer times you pray together in your church. Every prayer time has their own prayer time. You set up the prayer time and most of the prayer time, your personal prayer time, they are longer than the other times. Your prayer time is longer than the church time. Your prayer time is longer than the family time. Your prayer time with God must, must be in God. Let us hear from Christ what he says. He said, will you not just watch me for one hour? One hour. Which means you pray less than one hour on your personal prayer time is wrong. As you develop your prayer life, if time comes, you come to an hour. If time comes, you come to two, three, four. Depends on the time of the day. Amen. At least some weeks you have to do that. And every day of your life, your prayer life must increase, must improve because Christ has made you that giant. Don't sleep off. The Bible says that Christ came. When he went forth to go and pray, he came out to check the disciples while they were praying. They fell asleep. And he told Peter, I said, Can you not just watch with me for just one hour? Why are you sleeping off? He came again, second time. Third time he came again. And I said, okay, let me leave them. You know, as in sleep on because I know you are weak. Christ was weaker than them. He was more passive than them because he wanted to face the road. He wanted to be killed on the cross of Calvary. And he told God, He said, Lord, let this cup subside from me. And God said, no, it's a deal. <laughs> it's a deal. You have already agreed in heaven before you came here. It's a deal. And Christ said, okay, let your will be done, Father. And Christ bowed his head. I came to the disciples. He said, you can sleep on because I've got the victory already. Ladies and gentlemen, my topic is, man, wake up the sleeping giants. And face the key and face the real thing. Face the real cup you need to carry. Christ carried his cup. He was not weak. Despite it, the flesh, the flesh says it should be weak and forget about the dying. But it's the coming up with the Father have been made. The Bible says, Psalm 89, verse 34 and 35. God said, it's My covenant will I not break. Then I will not forget the words that proceed out of my mouth. For I have sworn by my own name to David that I will never lie to David. God cannot break his covenant. He has already registered it. He will do it. For you, he cannot change his mind. He's not afraid of you to change his covenant. He's not afraid. He's, he, 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 he keeps coming because he wants to respect himself, what he has already said. Our topic says, wake up the sleeping giants. Me and you, we are, we are giants. Don't sleep us from your responsibilities. Amen, somebody. We need to keep our garment clean. We need to be righteous. We need to be partakers of the divine nature of Christ. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23 and 20 to 25. The Bible says, do not forget the assemblies of the saints. Many Christians today, they have forgotten the assemblies of the saints. They used to be very vibrant. They used to come to church early. But today, they are sleeping off. Are you in the choir? 
you would like to sing very well before. But now someone offended you because of the offense you are sleeping off. You have no excuse that because of the offense, because you are weak, because you are you are down, because you have no job. That is why you are sleeping off. No way. You have to make sure that you are sounding with God. The covenant cannot be broken. God did not break his side. So don't break your own. Amen. So our topic says, wake up the sleeping giants. Wake up the sleeping giants, ladies and gentlemen. So if you check Proverbs 20 verse 13, he says, he that loveth to sleep, amen, will soon come to poverty. He will be poor in life. Doctors have advised us, sleep for eight hours. They don't sleep eight hours. <laughs> You take eight, eight, eight hours from 24 hours. How many hours do you have left? You will not bait. You will not do 20 things. How many hours remain? So we have to occupy our time and share it responsibilities. Amen. He said, do not love sleeping. I did not say no. We should sleep, but not too much. We should sleep normal, normal sleeping and go back to our working. Don't sleep off your working place. You are a worker. You respect it, your working place very well. You don't lie. You don't cheat. Don't, you don't do evil. But now you are sleeping off. You are not joining the evil people. You join them to do the wrong thing. Instead of you to take correction. You are set as an example of believers. Not to rub your mind to sleep off. And begin to do the evil things that your, your co-workers are doing. In your school, good students. But now you are doing evil. Come back again. God is beckoning on you. Come back and wake up from your sleeping slumber. Your responsibility, keep up to it, and God will honor you and respect you. The Bible said the book of Esther, chapter 6, around verse 3 and 4. The Bible says that the honor and dignity that was supposed to be given to Mordecai was thrown away from him. Nothing was done about him. But God made sure that King Ahasuerus, if you read from verse 1 of that um, Esther, chapter 6, from verse 1, the Bible says that King Ahasuerus could not sleep because somebody needed to be honored who have not slept off, who is agile. Oh, Paruk, I take it. You cannot sleep off. Since you have not slept off, there is a honor waiting for you. Mordecai was honored and it was, it, the dignity was restored. Ladies and gentlemen, your dignity can be restored today. What you have done that you are not rewarded for and you have kept your garment clean, you are going to be restored. God will restore back your dignity. God will restore back your honor. He will restore it because you have waited so long. What have made you weak? Either you have prayed before, prayer, the answer has not come. That's why you are sleeping. Either you ate too much. What can make you sleep as a giant? Obesity. You are eating too much. Can make you sleep as a giant. You can't pray, can't fast. Because you are, you are eating too much. So, number two. Because you have prayed before, the answer has not come. You believe that God did not answer your prayer. No! Don't sleep up because the first prayer has not been answered. Remember, there are certain things you pray for. That there are certain things you did not pray for. And God has answered that prayer. You were surprised. I didn't pray for you. He came. So it is like that. If what you don't pray for, God pray to you and answer it. What, what you have prayed for, God will answer you. So you are weak. Because you pray before answer has not come. You eat too much. Number four, you sleep. Number three, you sleep too much. Examine these things. Bible says, second Corinthians 13, from verse 1 to verse 5, says, examine yourself whether you are still in faith. Examine yourself and get up from your sleepy slumber. You know, something, apart from it was in the last, the last you know, lapse and it fell, but he still woke up again from his sleepy slumber. But it was, it was late because that eye was taken away. The eye, the prayer, you know, he did not pray for eye to be restored. He prayed that he can have to, to kill his enemy. So God restored back his strength what he prayed for and he killed his enemy. Amen. So that was it. And so any prayer you pray to God, he will answer you. Why did not not pray for the eye to be restored? Nobody knows. But what he could do that time was that the can is according to his faith can carry him. He woke up from the sleepy slumber. He prayed to God to forgive him. That did he consign him back to yourself. Give me your strength again once more. Pray to God to restore you back again, to give you strength once more again in your righteousness living, your holiness living. He can restore you back. He can restore you back. And that is you. First Samuel 26, verse 7 to 12. It was the story between David and King Saul. 
the Bible says in that place, First Samuel 26, verse 7 to 12, that King Saul gathered the whole Israel soldiers, 3,000 of them, 3,000 soldiers. He gathered them before to look for, you know, David who was running away from, from Saul. David would have killed Saul. He had the opportunity, but he cannot kill Saul. Because he believed that it is a, it is a, it is a, it is a king anointed of God. And so David decided to run from the king because he doesn't want to have trouble with the king. He was running from the king. And so, and so gathered 3,000 soldiers to pursue him. And in the wilderness, as they were resting, the Bible says that God caused a, a deep sleep to fall upon King Saul, the giant, with everybody. 3,000 people were sleeping. And David and the brother of uh, Joab, the Bible says, David took him and they went to meet Saul because Saul with his other subjects were already sleeping. And so uh, uh, David took Saul's salt from him and took his water can, <laughs> the, the cruise of water, and went away. And he went to the mountain to shout, Abna, the captain to Saul Sodia, where are you? Where do you permit your enemy to want to kill the king? You are not a right man to watch over the king. And the king woke up. The sleeping soldier woke up. He said, where is my sword? He said, look at your sword in the mountain here. How did you take it? Ha! So you would have killed me. And David said, remember, even the, the servant of David, the brother of Joab, told King David, Scott told David, he said, let us kill King Saul. He said, no, how do you how do you dare lay hands on the Lord's anointed? Don't kill the Lord's anointed. If I am doing what is right and King Saul is pursuing me for nothing, the Lord will fight against, he will fight against, he will fight against my adversary, King Saul. The Bible says, that King Saul began to beg David. Anyway, I've offended you. I am sorry. Come back to the palace. Stop running from me. Amen. The sleeping giant, he thought he was so great, but he fell asleep. There's a time for you to wake up. You have slept so long time. You have, you have, you have been resting for a long time. Get up now your water can. Get us a cruise of oils. Get up now. Get up your sword of faith. And get up, take up your shield of faith again and fight these battles. He said, I pray for a long time. I'm fighting giants. Let me not pray again. God has risen to that standard. Don't fall down. You're already a high soldier. Don't limit yourself. God wants to reward you because your reward is waiting for you. I'm going to close with this. The Bible said, Philippians 3. He said, Brethren, I can't talk myself to have apprehended, but this is one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and looking for towards those things that are before. Amen. I press forward toward the man for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Philippians 3, verse 13 and 14. He said, Brethren, I can't not myself apprehend it. Forget those things which are behind me. Those things you have done behind you, forget them. Forget them. And look forward. Are you thinking about your sin you have seen before? You are thinking about it. That we will you that God are forgiving you. Move on. Don't remain where you are. Move forward like a good soldier of Christ. Come on, move on. It is good. It is it is true that you are falling before, but now forget about those things. Look forward to those things. There's a reward waiting for you. There's a price. Pastor Paul said there's a price waiting for me. There's a price. I press forward towards the price for the I press towards the, the mark for the price of the high calling. Press forward towards the man for the price. Press forward. Don't look back. Wake up from your slumber. Wake up from your sleep. Oh, sleeping giant. There is room for you. There is way for you. Christ is here. He's here. You can get up again. Yeah, I see you getting up. Of your faith. Forget that weakness. And Christ is there to receive you once again. To uphold you. To strengthen you. To lead you. Father, I thank you for these souls. That we are sleeping giant before, but now tonight they have recharged themselves with the Holy Ghost. They have bounced back to faith again in their lives, every area of their lives, whether marriage, whether the faith, whether business, whether schools, whether you know the evangelical work, they have bounced back again. Father, I demand for your strength upon these souls. Thank you, Holy Ghost. As these sleeping giants are woken up, they are woken up again. They are great now. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, we pray.
God bless you. I see you again for the next topic.